when you watch this movie, it's important to pay attention to all the details. And Loki even tells us, because when he's with Keller in one scene, he asked Keller why he didn't tell him something in Keller's About the building. Yeah, Keller said, I, I didn't think it mattered. And then Loki says, everything matters. And he's telling the audience, everything matters in this movie. You have to pay attention to everything, which becomes true. Because as we see, it's a very complex story. And all of these storylines are connected. You know what I mean? Especially even the body at the bottom of the church. Yeah. So Loki is going to check on local sex offenders to see if he can get a lead. And he finds that old corpse at the basement of the church. And wearing he's wearing a necklace. And it's got this odd maze-like pendant on it. And it happens pretty early on, but then later on... We don't think anything of the of the icon. Yeah, you don't think anything much of the body. You don't start to know they're related until the priest starts to talk and talk about what's going on, talking about how there's a family of people who are doing all these killings along with the, the person that was in the basement. And then if you if you kind of notice that necklace, when he finds the, the guy... Bob he, Taylor. Yeah, when he finds Taylor, who he chased from the candlelight vigil, which is a great scene, mm-hmm. um, he finds his house... And on the walls of all the rooms inside his house are these maze-like drawings, which obviously means that this is connected somehow. And that's where he finds all those bins full of snakes and also blood-covered clothing, which Loki uses with Keller to identify and if any of the clothing is his daughter Anna's, which he recognizes a sock, which Taylor recently stole from their her bedroom. Yeah, so we learn we learn that Bob Taylor's story is actually a critical storyline within this film because we learn that Bob Taylor, when he was a kid, was abducted by Holly and, and her husband, but um, he actually escaped after several weeks. He was drugged up, so he doesn't remember who his captors were, but for the rest of his life, he was so mentally disturbed by, by the by the kidnapping that he turned into this person who wanted to replicate the kidnapping of the children. He wanted to replicate what he thought he, who he thought this person was that kidnapped him. And so what Bob Taylor does is when the kids are kid after the kids are missing, he sneaks into the, into their homes, steals their clothing and covers them with pig blood to make it seem as though he he's living this fantastical imaginary life as the, the abductor. And so this is why when Keller and Franklin and Nancy go to identify the clothing, it is actually their kids' clothing, but it's actually just covered in pig's blood, which we find out later. And so we find out that he's obsessed with these mazes because Holly and her husband were obsessed with the mazes, and he has that maze pendant. Because he, the way that they taunt the children to escape is if you can complete all these mazes, you can leave. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the ways that the girl Joy escapes is they're not paying attention. And she has that maze book next to her. And they both just try to run to escape. And that's how Joy escapes. Yeah. But Anna still, still gets captured and stays with her. Yeah. And so this is why Bob Taylor actually makes that maze book, which we think and Loki thinks is important to the story, but it ends up not being important at all. And Joy escapes, but not Anna. And Joy's in the hospital, and they all go to see her. And, and you can't help but feel horrible for Keller and his wife, Grace, because their daughter hasn't been found. You can see that look on their face where the other parents are so relieved, and Joy's asleep, but she's alive, and she's there. But still, but still Keller still has that crazed look in his eyes, and he's trying to be polite, and he's trying to get information out of Joy and she says that odd line, you were there. She saw him there, and even though, but she was drugged up, so she doesn't really clearly remember it. And that's when Keller realizes there's something with um, Alex Jones's uh, aunt's house because that's really the only place he's been besides torturing Alex Jones. Yeah, so he realizes if, she, if, if Joy saw him at the house, it has to be Holly's house because he was there recently. And so he decides, so then he finally understands Holly is the one who's the abductor, and then he books it out of the hospital. And Loki, under, Loki knows Loki knows that that Keller abducted Alex, and so he chases after him. And what happens is Keller escapes, but and then he goes to Holly's house. But Loki thinks he's going to his apartment building, which he owns, and he finds he finds out that Keller's not there. But then he finds Alex, and they they rescue Alex from the torture cell, and then which leads to. Keller's confrontation with Holly, which, which is one of the best scenes. Crazy, because he, obviously, this woman does not fit the bill of a killer or a kidnapper of children because she's just this innocent old lady. She's frail. Who, what she, could she ever do? She would never harm a fly. And then when Keller's in the kitchen and he's pulling out his tools and he's telling her 
that like he doesn't want to have to hurt you, but he, he will. And then he turns around, but the way she opens the door with the, the towel on her hand, and she's like, oh, I, I burnt my hand, so I, uh, I'm feeling a little off today. Obviously, she's got a gun under there. Yeah. And then uh, she pulls the gun on him, and then you finally realize it's her. It's been her this whole time. And then she makes him drink the the concoction that drugs him out. That scene where he's just drinking this, oh my god, it's such a powerful scene. And and she, there's even this improvised moment where, he, where Hugh Jackman drank some, and then she goes, drink some more. Because he's a big guy. Yeah. And she actually improvised that line. And you can tell that she's done this so many times that she knows on the spot how much he has to drink. Yeah, exactly. And it's so smart and in such a smart way to subdue your victims and to get them to bend at your will and to do be what compliant. You want because he does everything that she says after that because he doesn't even know what's going on. He's feeling so sick to the stomach. His stomach, he almost pukes and he kind of walks outside and they, he doesn't really know where he is. But he's still, he's still half there. It's just a terrifying scene. And then she reveals to him that. Yes, Alex took the girls, but he took them because he just wanted to play with them. But then when she when Alex brought the girls to his to Holly's house, Holly's the one who said, We're gonna leave them here. They should stay. Yeah. I was the one who said they should stay. Yeah. And so then, we learned that yes, Alex took them, but he didn't technically kidnap them. He's cause he's a kid in in his head. He just wanted to hang out with other kids. And then the metaphor of the toy RV being pushed by Loki's hand comes to fruition, and Keller is forced to back the Trans Am up and put inside that pit, which is awful. Mm. Awful to imagine how many kids have been put down there, how many people have been put down there. And, he, and she shoots him in the leg, too, so yeah. he's going to bleed out in a few days. But he, but he might last 24 hours, she says. Yeah, if, she ma- if he makes the tourniquet. If you make a tourniquet, you might last 24 hours. And she hours. says that disturbing line where she says... I would love it if you were still alive when I dumped your daughter's corpse down here tomorrow. Which also means that she's still alive. Yeah. So it sounds like like Anna's still alive and there's still hope to get her let yet to get her yet. And now comes Loki to the freaking rescue. For no reason. It's just a simple thing where his captain wants him to give the information that Alex is safe to Holly. And that just And he doesn't even want to go. He's very reluctant. Yeah, it's just a minute after she puts him in the pit. He comes and shows up. Loki shows up at Holly's house, and then Holly Holly thinks that her, the jig is up because after she capacitates Keller and puts him in the pit, she goes and opens his toolkit and finds a handgun in there. And so this gives her the reason to believe that if Keller was on to me, then obviously the cops have to be on to me. So that's why when Loki shows up, she thinks the jig is up. Gotcha. That's very observant. And then... <laughs> And Loki coming to Holly's house, this is where the connection of the corpse in the bottom of the church finally comes into fruition, where he's, he enters the house and no one seems to be home, and he's kind of confused because he sees the car on the driveway, and there are lights on, and he goes inside of a room and he, he finds a, a portrait of a man who, from like it looks like it's from like the 80s, the photo, and he's wearing the same exact necklace of the corpse, and also it's the same necklace that he saw that was the map that Taylor drew before he killed himself. So the, the the medallion on the necklace is the exact same thing, which in his mind is like, this is obviously the house, this is the place. And that's when he finally pulls his gun out, realizing that Holly's behind everything because mm-hmm. the corpse in the basement of the church is her husband. Tying it all together. And that's when Loki finds her drugging and trying to overdose the girl with some sort of medication in a syringe. And he takes her out because she obviously, like you said, knows that the jig must be up, so I'm going to yeah. go out blazing. I'm going to kill the kid, and I'm going to ha- kill myself with and this then, cop. And then Loki gets shot in the face while he shoots her, and he's got this horrible wound on his head. And then it's just this amazingly emotional scene of him trying to drive her to the hospital, but he can't see. His vision's blurry. He's going in and out of consciousness. It's almost. snowing. The roads are wet. He can't see out the windshield. It's just blurry lights everywhere. He's cruising. He doesn't have a siren. He just has a light. It's such a suspenseful scene, and every time I watch it, my blood pressure just rises. And Anna's overdosing in the back seat. She's ha- going She's into foaming at the mouth. Yeah. And so it's terrifying, but he eventually makes it to the hospital, and, and she ends up being okay, and it's just like... What a relief that Anna's alive, but now you're so worried about Keller in the pit. So what happened was Loki gets into the hospital, and then a few day, a couple of days later, everyone's okay, and they have a nice little scene where they say thank you to him. But then also, everyone thinks that Keller ran off. People think that Keller felt the suspicion of the police and, and took off and got out of Dodge. But what they don't understand is that he's actually sitting in that pit, bleeding out and who knows if he's even still alive and this is where finally for me keller's motto of hope for the best prepare for the worst comes to his benefit because loki is just kind of just like trying to figure out what happened to keller and he's at the the house while the 
the forensics teams are digging up bodies and, and everything and trying to find corpses of, of dead children, even hopefully find Keller's corpse. And this is when we eventually, he's looking around the house by himself and he hears the chirping of the whistle. And he's like, what is that? Nothing. It must be nothing. And then you hear the whistle again. And then he's like, oh, well, it's just probably nothing again. And then he hears the whistle two more times. And then he just looks right to the spot where Keller's buried. And you know Loki's going to find it. Yeah. And again, this is where Keller's finally being preparedness and worst possibilities probably comes to to light where he can actually use his ability. For me, maybe somehow he figures some way to survive in the bottom of the pit. Maybe he he's really good at, at tying knots or something to yeah, stop the bleeding. Yeah, he built a good tourniquet probably. Maybe yeah. he figured out a way to stop the bleeding of his leg or, got the, or pulled the bullet out somehow. Yeah. And so his ability to survive is what lets him be found. Mm. And also... The uh, planting of that whistle from the children earlier on, who had the whistle, because they were, that's they were looking, they were playing with the whistle outdoors. There's a great irony because the reason why the girls went missing in the first place was they wanted to find the whistle, and then the whistle is what saves Hugh Jackman. Exactly. <laughs> and then a lot of people are like, "Oh, is he gonna find him? Is he not gonna find him? Obviously, he's gonna find them." They just the filmmakers just leave it up to us to imagine it. Yeah, you don't have to show everything, and you know what? Maybe in your mind doesn't find him. Yeah, but I like to think that obviously he's gonna find him because Loki's a wicked smart guy. Yeah, I definitely think he finds him, and I think it's a great ending. And obviously Keller's gonna face consequences for what he did, but also you can't blame him for what he did. He did whatever he had to do to find his daughter. I'm sure he'll accept those consequences and would have done everything all over again the yeah. same exact way. And also I don't want to see all that. You know what I mean? I think it was a great ending. And it was such a powerful moment. And when it cut to black, I get goosebumps every time. Yeah, you don't have to show everything in a movie. Yeah. Same thing with dialogue. You don't have to constantly tell the audience everything. Yeah. Let them figure it out on their own. There's smart people watching the movies. Obviously, there's some dumbass people watching movies out there. But <laughs> most people are pretty intelligent watching movies. Yeah. But I think this movie is so well made, so well acted. It's an incredible story. It's an exhausting film to watch. By the end of two and a half hours long. By the end of this movie, you are emotionally drained. You have been on edge. Your heart rate's probably like one twenty the entire time. Mm -hmm. It's it's intense as hell. And it's kind of like a Nolan movie where it's better on the second. It's it's great on the second viewing when you understand you you're understanding the story because it's it's a little confusing the first time around. But if you pay attention, but if you watch it a second time, you're rewarded by understanding where all these clues and Easter eggs were sprinkled throughout the entire film. And you still look at it differently every time because Denis puts so much into his films. Again, attention to detail with the metaphors, with the sets, with the symbology. The metaphors are all over the place. 